Okay, guys. Okay, uh, let's get started. What we want to do now is we're going to try and figure out some of the different ways we can use synth to create objects. And start with the first way, which is kind of a, a interesting way, kind of like it. It's kind of the more fun way to use synth, actually. So I'm going to just take this box, something like this. I'm going to tab into it, select that first face. Remember that with synth, you got to select the faces that you want to apply things to. So we just did that. And now I'll go into synth. And what I want to do first is I'm going to just take this very first layer and I'm going to add an insert. So let's go in here and let's do the CW cutters and let's take on this one, like slant for monitor. And uh, we'll just sit and do it and see what happens. So what we've done now, as you can see, it looks a little better this way. You can see what we've done now is we've created this one, two, three stack space. And actually, I just want to use one in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off. And when I turn this off, it means that we're not going to maintain aspect ratio. I'll do it again. And now they all spread to the edge. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the placement style. And instead of rows, I'm going to use grid. And I'm going to just leave it in the default and say do it. And that's really where we're at. Let me take a look at that. Yeah, that's kind of what we have for the very first level. Let's move on to the second level. So I really should call these layers. And the second one, we're just going to add a new layer. Remember that we rendered layers from the top down. It's not like Photoshop where the top is the uh, topmost layer. In this case, our top is the bottommost layer. So you render layers from the top down. So let's go ahead now and we're going to grab the CW synth. And I'll do this CW pipes at 01. I'm going to use that one for now. And then in here, I'm going to hit this button and watch what happens. It actually fills in the exact same K pack. So I can go now, I can turn this on and say CW pipes 02. So now I could have one and two, right? We're just going to say do it and see what happens. Oops. Now this will happen a lot where it actually <laughs> put it on the wrong object. So I'm going to hit the clear button here and I'm going to take this object and I'm going to just hide it. Then I won't have that problem. So now I'll click on our object here. And a lot of times I'll work this way so I don't see all the, all the wires and everything. I'll just work like this and I'll say do it again. And now you'll see that, okay, we've got a bunch of pipes and everything, but look at this. These three, I don't know what happened there. I do know what happened, actually, and that is that we're using in the optimizations, we're using, don't forget, we're using 2.91, and we have this exact option here. So if I hit exact and say do it, it's going to take a little bit longer, but it'll get me exactly what I want. I don't really want this at the front there, so I'm going to scroll down into transformation, and the Z position right here, I'm going to just move that back a little bit. So Z position is always, you know, in and out. Wherever, Whatever face that you're looking at, the Z position, it's local to that face. So it's not about the global coordinates. It's local to that particular face. So our Z position, we're going to say minus 0.2. Let's try that. Scroll up. Say do it. Here we go. So now we have some wires showing up uh, and... But they're behind some of the face panels here. So we like that. Let's go ahead and keep on going. So now we're going to add another layer. Now I can name these if I want to. Uh, I'm not going to right now, but if I'm going to create a recipe, I probably will. Okay, so we're going to do another layer. I'm going to hit the add button now. And here we're going to go into the cutters again. And, you know, I'm just going to use the, well, I'm going to, let me see what I have. What else? I'm going to use this second one, base desk. And I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to hit that and hit do it and see what happens. Okay, so we've added some more elements to our design. And as we look by, we can see that we've got still stuff coming in through the side. And we have some nice symmetrical elements over here. So let's move on to our next one. Add a new layer. And we'll go back into the... Uh, let's go in this time on our inserts. Let's look at the CW not scaled. And let's grab maybe... I don't know. Let's grab this mass box one. And then let's also go over here. And in our CW scaled one, let's grab this one with this background called Space Golden. Now this is a blank one. So basically when you add this, it means that it'll sometimes insert a blank one. It'll randomize this and it'll sometimes insert a blank one. So with that being said, I'm not gonna mess with anything else and just hit the do it button again. And this is what we end up with. Now typically when we use blanks, we probably want to turn off this because uh, we don't need to force the aspect ratio. In fact, we want blanks to fill up the parts that aren't. So let's go ahead and hit the do it and see what happens when we do that. There we go. So that's kind of something a little bit different. Let's uh, try a different main seed. Like let's take three, for instance, and say do it. 
Ah, so we still have another problem down here. Let's go to my optimizations, hit exact, and say do it. And now we have it uh, set up like that. I'm not really particularly crazy about that. I'm gonna basically turn on auto update, and I'm gonna keep hitting this main seed button, and it'll actually generate new designs as we go. So there's one, let's go to two. Kinda like the one that had something over here going on. There you go. That looks kinda cool. Okay, let's, let's leave that and move on to the next one. So one thing I should mention is that when we hit this main seed, we're adjusting everything. And we may not wanna do that. We may wanna say, <clears throat> let's stick on zero for the main seed. And then let's adjust the, just the seed for that layer. So we can go in here and we can adjust a seed value, say of two, and we'll get a, a similar thing to what we had before, but we still maintain this main seed of zero up here, which is kind of nice because when we adjust the main seed, it adjusts for every single layer. So that's a key thing to keep in mind. The main seed, when it gets changed, it changes the seed values for every single layer, but each layer also has its own seed value. Okay, so let's add another layer. This time we'll go into CW scaled. And what's happening now is it's, it's actually using the, uh, because we have auto update on, it's using the first item in the CW scale. So I'm gonna turn this off so I don't get in too much trouble here. And let's go in here and I'm gonna grab this monitor 14. And I'm gonna leave the maintain aspect ratio on, but I'm also gonna click this button, which means only use that monitor once. So I'm gonna clear this now and I'll do it and you'll see what happens. Remember, it's only gonna use the monitor insert one time and there we have it. So the monitor insert got placed at the top. Now let's check this out. We're always using the same thing here. We got three rows, no variation, with variation. It's all very straightforward, kind of default settings. Now you can we can play with those as we want to. Just wanna kind of show you where we're at right now. Okay, so now let's add some edge boundary detail. What we can do is add a new layer and I'm gonna go into CW Cutters, and I'm gonna grab this little one right here called Border Blivet, and I'm gonna set the scale to something like, I don't know, 10%. I'm gonna go down here, and I'm gonna say Edge. So that means it's gonna place things all around the edge. Frequency, I'm gonna make that 20%. So let's go ahead and do it and see what we have. So you can see, we already have some interesting things going on, but these are going the right direction. These are going in the wrong direction, these, these ones right here. So how can we fix that? Well, we're gonna go down here and we have X only. So if I hit the X only and say, do it. Okay, so now you see I have three down here and one up here. So I might wanna just change the seed value a little bit and turn on auto update. There you go, so I've got two up there, two there. These are a little close, but I don't know. Let's just, just keep playing with this. I'll just keep incrementing the seed value and see what we get with. Okay, that's gonna be fine. I'll have one here and one here, just a little a little cutout. Then I'll take the same layer, I'll just duplicate it. And in here, I'm gonna say Y only. Then I'll turn on auto update, select my object and say do it. And, oh, okay, well, it's doing on the Y only, but we need to rotate them. So let's go down to our rotation and add 90 to that. And now we'll see that that's pretty good. But, you know, one thing is they're sticking, kind of sticking out. So what can we do there? Well, let's go in and let's set the offset of these to something like 0.02. There you go. Okay, so now that we have our design, what I'd like to do is I'm gonna use this iterator tool. And the iterator tool is gonna render a bunch of different iterations based on seed values. So what we'll do is we'll take a seed range, we'll start at zero, let's move it up to maybe 25, something like that. Let's find a folder that we wanna to use to download. I'm gonna use this box design folder. I've already opened up that folder here in Explorer so I can see what's going on. And then I need to actually set up the camera. So I'll hit zero, home. As you can tell, I've already set those dimensions to 1080 by 1080. I'm gonna hit a, just a test render to see what it looks like. Okay, it looks pretty good. And what I'll do now is I'll just hit the start button. Now I'll switch over to the folder. And you can see, already starting to see that we're having some renders created for us. That's the first one and the second one. And so this will just kind of work its way through as it moves forward. It'll continue to generate different renders based on that particular recipe that we created. I'm gonna let this go for a while and we'll come back. Okay, so our 25 iterations have been rendered. Uh, let's just kind of walk down them. That's interesting, that's number two. That one's kind of interesting, that's number 11.
and based on our recipe, that's what we have. So I have two 11 and zero. And in this case, two and 11. And I'm probably going to just stick with what we had, actually. But that just shows you how Iterator works. So we're back here in Blender. Just to show you how this works, we're going to go back into, into this area. And the main seed, this is zero. This is the one we liked. But if we wanted to look at number two, I just type in two because that was one of the ones that we thought was interesting. And that's two. Changed a little bit. And let's try 11. And that's another one. So it's just kind of kind of an interesting thing to look at. So I'm going to go back to zero here. And what I'm going to do next is actually something kind of fun. Uh, I'll go and I'll select our box. And I'm going to select this face now. And I'll tab out of this. And then I'll just say do it. See what happens over here. Check that out. How crazy is that? Now, in this case, I may not want to have that monitor over here. So let's find that one. That's right here. So I'm going to just turn this one off and then I'll say do it again. There you go. So you see what's going on there, right? Kind of a cool, cool layout. And of course, I can keep messing with this all day long. If I want, to, if I really like this design, I can just go in here in the recipes and I can say save this recipe with a description of what it is and what it does. And then I can hand that recipe over to anybody else. And as long as they have the same KPEX, they're going to be able to replicate it. So that's pretty cool. Now, one last thing I'll show you is that what I typically like to do at this point, let's go ahead and power save this. Uh, we'll go back to synth and we'll go into the tools and I'm going to bake the object. This basically applied all the modifiers on this object. Now I'm going to remove the unused wire objects and you can still see there are some, but these are actually not wire objects. They're part of what's going on with the cables. So that's going to be fine. And then what I like to do is I'll just go over here. And now that I have all these objects all set up, first I'll select all and I'm going to just basically go into kit ops and I'll say remove the kit ops props. Now, why do I do this is because I want to be able to add more stuff on here. So I can go in here and I'm going to look under this SC Classic Corp. And this is a free K pack from Sir Charles. And he, in my mind, he's the best graphics label decal guy out there. So I'm going to just take like this one, this inspection one, and I'll just go over here and I'll select this. And if I look at this, I may see that the scale is not the correct scale because when KitOps inserted it, it automatically scaled it. So I'm going to just say Control A, scale. Not that I really probably need to do that because that scale is not that bad. But And then I'll add the insert here and I'll put it in the middle of this and hit the S button, scale it down. And I can just roll right down to here. And these are the, like I said, the free ones. And I hook up this emissive display like this. And I'll change that to something kind of an orange and make the strength five. And we can see that that works pretty cool. So I've got that in there. And I might also go in, for instance, let's go to my SW scaled. And I might take this, add an insert here, scale it up. That's some kind of jack of some kind. Uh, maybe I'll go in and grab a USB connector, add an insert here, scale it up, something like that. And now, and because I'm in smart mode, I can say Shift D Z and do. So I've got one down. I can hit Shift R, Shift R. So I've got a couple of those dropping in there, and I might just select them all and move them all down. And then I'll go back into my Classic Corp. Maybe grab a something like this and add that insert right in the center here, scale it down. We'll go in here and I'm just turn off the saturation on that. So you get the idea. You can, at this point, you can start to add hero elements, all kinds of different things that you want or may want. You may look at uh, some existing uh, KitOps inserts. One thing I should mention is you can use any KitOps insert with Synth. If it works with KitOps, it'll work with Synth. Let's grab this, come over here, and maybe we'll stick one of these over on this. Scale it down, move it up, and adjust the color. And so you get the idea. And then I'll, in my case, I'll probably use KitOps bevel and uh, add a little tiny bevel to uh, all of this stuff so that it looks even more realistic. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next KitOps synth tutorial.